With Guild Wars 2's diverse class system, you can play anything as anything. But sometimes you just want to play a traditional warrior. So here is my build guide to the power spellbreaker for raids and strike missions, which can be a in your face DPS, or it can play the role of a tank while still doing pretty good damage and supporting allies with the option to give banners for quickness. So let's go over the build, the skill rotation, and how I would use it in an actual encounter. There are two variants that I'm gonna go over which can use very similar gear. Essentially, you only need to change your trinkets if you're gonna swap between the builds and one of your weapons. But the full DPS variant is full Berserker gear stats with Scholar runes, then a hammer with force and accuracy sigils, and a dagger and an axe with force and accuracy sigils. You only get to 71% crit chance with this setup, but because of the spellbreaker traits, every time you remove boons or disable an enemy, you will gain a lot of stats, which include precision, and you'll get to your crit cap. So essentially, with the attacker's insight trait, you can get to way over the crit cap, but because mechanics exist and you can't always hit the boss, we're going to go a little bit over the crit cap to make up for the fact that not every situation is hitting a DPS goal. For the full DPS build with a hammer, go defense and strength with all the damage modifiers. You get adrenaline whenever you CC an enemy and hammer has lots of CCs on it. So it's able to keep up your adrenaline to constantly use your burst skills, but also to use full counter, which can help you to survive in a lot of situations. You also get stability whenever you CC an enemy, which helps you to avoid any kind of mechanic that would prevent you from having control of your character. In Strength, we just take all the damage modifiers, and Berserker's Power will give you even more damage modifiers when you land burst skills. So essentially, your burst skills are your highest priority skill. And in Spellbreaker, we have even more damage modifiers, and you will also get Magebane Tether whenever you land your burst skill on the target, and that target will take more damage. So you've just got damage modifiers all over the place, but you need to CC and use your burst skills to get those damage modifiers, and then those will prelude into your heavy hitting damage skills like your Hammer 2 and your Axe 5. At the start of every fight, you want to use your CC skills to get adrenaline as fast as possible because you want to use your Earthshaker. Your burst skills will give you the most damage modifiers, so getting them as soon as possible is really important. So I open up with Bull's Charge into the Staggering Blow, Hammer 4. This gives you enough adrenaline to use Earthshaker, and landing your Earthshaker will give weakness because it's a burst skill. You do more damage to weakened enemies. You also put the Mage Bane Tether on the target that you land your burst skill on, and you do more damage to targets that are tethered. And you will also CC them, which will give you Attacker's Insight and more Adrenaline. And then you will also get Berserker's Power. So getting that Earthshaker immediately gives you all these damage modifiers that you really want. So after that, you want to use your hardest hitting ability, which is Fierce Blow, the Hammer 2. And then you want to recharge that with your Hammer 5, and then use the Hammer 2 again. Do not use the Hammer 5 if the Hammer 2 is going to be off cooldown in a couple seconds. But... If you're going to swap out of your weapon set anyways, you might as well use it so that you can swap out. And then you want to use your hammer 3 and 4 whenever if you're still waiting for your weapon swap. But since this is the very beginning of the rotation, you can just swap out as soon as you use your hammer 2 and 5 and 2 combo. And then you want to use your breaching strike, which will give you more of the berserker's power buff. And it does just tons of damage to foes that have no boons on them. Then you want to use disrupting stab which is a CC which will give you Adrenaline and will give you Attacker's Insight for more damage modifiers. And then you use your Axe 4 to get that cooldown going while your Whirling Axe is going off, which is your heaviest hitting ability. But if you use the Bull's Charge in your opener, it's not going to be ready for when you want to use Whirling Axe. So on the first time, you're not going to have it. But every time after that, you want to save your Bull's Charge for your Whirling Axe. And that'll give you the most damage modifiers for your heaviest hitting ability. Then you want to prioritize using your Breaching Strike or your Dagger 2 if nothing else is ready, and then swap out, go into your Hammer, use Earthshaker, Hammer 2, Hammer 5, 
hammer two again, and then just use your three and four. And then you just auto attack until your hammer two is ready. And since it's got a couple of seconds before we leave, we can use that and the earth shaker. And then we can go into the dagger. If you want to provide quickness and other boons to your team, then you can't go for defense because you need to go discipline and strength is needed. So you go discipline and strength and you go for the doubled standards trait and three banners. You can give your team a lot of resistance uptime, which is very powerful and stability on top of the quickness that you give. And your third banner can be either defense or the fury banner. And then since you can't use the hammer, you can use the great sword. And since you can't use the fury signet because you need to use banners, we have a loss of precision, so we need to go for Assassin's Trinkets to make up for that loss of precision. So you can use the same armor as the full DPS variant, you just need to change your Trinkets to Assassin's and put on a Greatsword, and then change your Traits, and then you can run both variants of the build with minimal gear investment. Your number one priority is to give quickness to your team, but you don't need to use your banners off cooldown to do that. So generally, I like to weave in the banners in between my burst skills. So you can start off the fight by giving all your banners if really necessary. And then you use your Dagger 3, which will give you Attacker's Insight, and Dual Strike, which can give you a decent amount of Adrenaline. And then you want to use your Breaching Strike into your Axe 5. From here, you want to swap into your Great Sword. Use the F1 and the Great Sword 2. And then you can use your 4 and 5. And then you can whirl through the target. Use your F1, swap, use the F1 again, 3, 4, 5, and then you can put in your banners while you're waiting for your cooldowns. Use your F1, swap, F1, use a banner, use your greatsword too. So you kind of get the idea is prioritize using your burst skills and swapping weapons and using the next burst skill. And then when you have time in between your skills, put down your banners and then keep doing your bursts. Despite being full berserkers, you can still provide the role of a tank for your team. If you need to get more toughness than your squad to get aggro of the boss, then just put on some knight's gear until you have more toughness than the next highest person. And then what you want to do is you want to use full counter to block attacks. So when you get enough adrenaline on the defense build, you get adrenaline whenever you CC. And on the Discipline build, you get it when you swap weapons and crit on your axe. So you want to use your full counter, which will block the next attack that hits you, and then evade afterwards. This is going to give you a lot of survivability in many cases because bosses don't attack very fast. Also, Defiant Stance will turn all damage you take into healing. So even though you would get one-shotted by some attacks, you can just use Defiant Stance and heal through it. And this can also be used aggressively if you want to ignore a mechanic and keep doing damage. You just Defiant Stance, stay in melee range, and just give out as much damage as possible. So here I'll be tanking the mech on the Kynang Overlook Strike mission. And my role is to face the mech away from the group and sidestep its attacks, while the rest of my group focuses on cleaving the sniper and the mech at the same time. Now at the start here, we need to be very careful because they will summon mines and push me away. And if I step into a mine, I will be downstated. So I need to use my defiant stance, and then I need to use bull's charge to get in range to be able to stay in front of the mech to be able to tank it. Otherwise it loses aggro and it starts shooting things all over the place. Now I performed that pretty well, so I didn't lose aggro and I didn't die. And I took out a mine at the same time with my defiant stance. But if, for example, I had lost aggro because I didn't time something well enough or sometimes the mech can be a little bit buggy, then I still have my elite skill, which is the war banner, and that can revive my allies as well. So it is really helpful to be able to, you know, make a res play in those high risk situations. So here's the final phase of the Aether Blade Strike mission. I'm going to show how I use my cooldowns to survive as a full DPS. So first off, we're going to try to CC with Earthshaker to get our modifiers. And then we're going to do our full burst because the boss's break bar has been broken. And we don't have to worry about mechanics. But now we need to dodge back and then leap back in to avoid the Mitran. We use full counter to avoid that whirl attack. 
and we don't need to move out and we still do damage. Now the next attack we can use Defiant Stance to avoid and now we've got our full counter up again so we can use that on the next one and we're actually going to use the F1 to leap over this so we don't get hit by that and now we can use full counter if we really want to but the boss is going to die. This is the Old Lion's Court Strike mission on challenge mode in the second phase. I've been designated to tank the green watch knight which just means I need to move it away from the rest of the group while surviving and I can't really do damage to it so all I do is just focus on using my burst skills because that will give me adrenal health which will heal me and then when the red watch knight is finished the rest of the group will go and help me with the green watch knight but I still need to tank it so I'm going to keep it on the side here and use my hammer burst use my axe burst and then it's going to do its pull mechanic very soon and there's also going to be CC, but I'm not going to move away for the CC. I'm only going to move away from the pull because I want to keep the Watch Knight on the edge so that we keep the Watch Knight separated or they do more mechanics. So as soon as it finishes the pull, I'm going to leap back to the side of the, the arena and I'm going to tank the Watch Knight. They get the CC without me and now I'm going to try to pull it away a little bit towards the other red circles so that we can stack them a little bit more but in general just keeping the boss on the edge now there's the pull again i just move out and i'm going to leap back in once the pull ends so i don't die going in too early though i could use the defiant stance if i really wanted to the boss has five percent more until they phase so i'm just going to keep it here use my full counter to stay alive while the group is separated from me and now i can just burst it down finish it off with my defiant stance just to be safe there and now we need to go on the blue watch knight which just pushes us away from it and this pulsing damage is really convenient for my build because i can use full counter at any time during that pulsing damage and that'll ensure that i get it to trigger and using full counter when you know when it's going to land is a dps increase because it also recharges your f1 burst skill so you can use the f1 then you can use full counter then you can use your F1 again. Here I'm gonna use my War Banner to revive my ally because we're getting pushed away and we don't wanna have to deal with that later on, so I wanna res as soon as possible. But in general, now we don't have too many issues because we've got everyone alive, we just need to stick on the boss, though there is a red circle in the middle which kinda makes it inconvenient to do damage, so I have to use my full counter to evade while I'm doing damage use my defiant stance to stay in that red puddle to do damage and just kind of like rotate there with my cooldowns to be able to survive while I'm doing damage in the risky zone. But that is pretty much how you play the power spellbreaker in raids and strikes. If you like this content, then like the video, subscribe if you want to see more and comment which one you'd like to see next. And with that being said, I'll see you all next time.